Ha, oh, Madonna. I've read further into that kid's article, Faruja. And again, I love the Faruja family. Quintessential Maltese. Definitely not pro-British. Definitely pro-Maltese. But young Faruja, come on. Queen Victoria bringing Malta democracy? Education? What else? Oh, the Hutlish. They were the world's most notorious culture thieves. That's why in their museum to this day, everything in there isn't theirs. Because they've got no culture. Ha al Madonna. The only thing the British did, the only true thing they did, was use Malta's resources, time, waste its time, uh, install a few phone boxes. That's it. Uh, they, they introduced a few other things, but for the most part, really, really, historically, we're talking about historical fact here, the Maltese are the ones who taught the British how to live, how to be, how to do. The British were enlightened from Malta. Much of their enlightenment occurred in Malta. It didn't occur anywhere else in Europe. How do you know that? Because they didn't have any other place in Europe. The, the British visited other places in Europe, but as Europeans were, everything was secretive. They didn't get not, they didn't get anything from the French, from the Spanish, from the Italians. It was oh yeah, this is this and this and this, but there was very very limited sharing, knowledge sharing, trade sharing, anything. Come on, this is we're talking about the early eighteen hundreds here, and the early nineteen hundreds. Do you really think the Latin states or European states were going to give the uh, British their state secrets in science and other things? The British, beside Malta, had India, had the Caribbean, had Fiji, had parts of this, parts of the world here. Australia, obviously. Uh, did they still have South Africa, Canada? They had a lot of places around the world, but none of them were European except Malta. Malta is where the British stationed. <laughs> pretty much their entire fucking army. Uh, a small island, but not so small that it couldn't cater for all their needs. It's a military island. It always has been. It's always been designed in such way to uh, host or house large military forces. Uh, it's been like that since antiquity. It's not a recent machination. It's as in it's recent for the Maltese, like six or seven hundred years <laughs> which for some countries were 300 or 400 years before they came into existence. Uh, this is something the Maltese have been doing for 2,000 years or more. It's a military island, and there is good argument to suggest that it's an Italian military island. Obviously, that over time evolves, and it becomes just uniquely Maltese. But when I say Italian military island, I'm talking about what it was 2,000 years ago. So you've got to be careful with Maltese history because when you hear me say things like that, it doesn't necessarily mean a recent past. Malta is as ancient as ancient gets. It's a 7,000 year old civilization at the least. There's so much more to discover in Malta because of that grey period where there's a few answers and much work to be done. But Malta is as ancient as ancient comes. And when you talk about Italian military island clearly hasn't been that for a thousand years but two thousand years was only that long ago and it was a roman military island you could suggest or a phoenician military island it's always been geared to be some type of military island a lot of sources don't mention that but i am of the strict belief that it always has been a military island and that it's the name military militia comes from the maltese name militi it's just a word thing, wordplay. Militi, militia. Yeah, and, and we know the island, traditionally, the Maltese, is not, not so much in the last hundred years, but over the millennia, uh, the Maltese are vicious. Uh, in war, not in, in peacetime, the most loving people in the world. If you know a Maltese person, the most warmest, friendliest, loveliest persons on earth. Very, very honest, very truthful people, very... Uh, very fair-dinkum people, as Australians say. 
but the, the Maltese are very vicious. They're unusually vicious. <laughs> I don't want to go into how vicious they are. Maltese are vicious. Extremely vicious. Uh, especially during the war. During warfare. Uh, it's like they go into another human. Uh, anyway. This idea that Britain done anything else but station its fucking clowns on Malta is quite amusing. There is massive reason to believe that there is there is so much reason to believe that all they did on Malta was steal culture, as elsewhere, not just Malta, steal culture, reinvent it, call it British. Ah, the British way. Over. Fucking all of a sudden, all these exotic foods were introduced into British cuisine and they started making. They started printing out British cookbooks. And they were convinced that this was legit because Malta was a British dominion. Even though it came from Malta and not Britain. Apparently they were one and the same. Well, they clearly weren't. Oh, fucking hilarious cunts. It introduced education. Let me suggest that the education model on Malta was so much superior to Britain that when the British got there, they shit themselves. The oldest university on Malta currently uh, is almost 500 years old. 1592, the University of Malta. That's just 20 years after the Grand Siege. I don't believe there's many other universities currently running that have a continu continuity that so I could be wrong there could be a university in England or something like that that's that old or somewhere else in Europe but the point is nothing is I don't believe any other university on earth is as continuous as that from 1592 onwards delivering that same reputation that same uh, way of doing things and even if there were universities elsewhere in Europe mainly Britain there is nothing suggesting that they were reputable, that they knew what the fuck they were doing uh, until they got to Malta. Uh, because all of a sudden, it's just amazing how this period... Uh, you've got to understand how history has a very, very interesting signature. All of a sudden, Britain becomes this scientific, cultural fucking powerhouse around the 1840s, 1850s. Yes, there was some industrial revolution before that. There was still some knowledge before that. But they didn't gain traction. They didn't gain this massive spark until the 1840s, 1850s. And then even 1820s, 1830s. And that's when their empire started to take off. That's when a lot of their... All their achievements started to take off. When they started to settle into their new home what they thought was their new home when they were able to analyse how everybody done things on Malta when the Maltese invited them showed them things, showed them this what did they do in return? photocopied it well, there was no photocopy of it they copied everything, recirculated it, reinvented it called it British oh this is British culture so sorry young Faruja all the British did in Malta was steal culture steal education and steal ideas it was the Maltese who inspired them, not the other way around. And it always has been. So, um, please remove that shit stain of a statue from Malta and put something nice there. Like, uh, I'm, I'm sick of fucking seeing us up as the front and center. It's making me fucking sick. We're not. Yeah, we are Malta. <laughs> yeah, fuck, what am I fucking, who am I kidding? But, you know, we, we're not, we don't make Malta. The, the Muscats make Malta. The fucking Camilleries make Malta. The Vellas make Malta. Come on, we, we need we need more fucking statues of uh, Saint George Preca. Fuck, who else? Uh, Mintoff. We, there needs to be get rid of fucking Victoria. Fuck her off. Put Mintoff there. 